Hello boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. The day after free agency day, free agent frenzy, the silly season as they like to call it. And was it ever silly? Oh man, that was amazing. The big one was, uh, we're going to be doing uh, John Klingberg free agency here. Okay. Yeah, I didn't do him before the free agency season. We did do Johnny Goudreau. And I, like you, had him going to either New Jersey or Philadelphia. But I did have Columbus as one of the teams that he might have gone to. And that's where he went to. Pretty interesting stuff. If, I, if you watch the video, I said, Philadelphia may not be able to find the way to get JBR off their books to be able to get him. And that appeared to be what happened. And I also said that New Jersey, as much as he, they might like the idea of bringing him over there, I didn't see how he fit overall. It, they would have been a very small team. I think they're going to be looking for some size there. Um, so they might have entertained it, but in the end decided not to, and then Columbus was the only one available uh, from that eastern area. Something that One thing about Columbus is, it's very family friendly, like Calgary that he was at before. And he's a big family guy. But anyways, I mentioned those in the video. So that's why this is going to be cool. Because we got a lot of those free agents uh, where they were going to go people correct. Uh, what, it was, what else was there? Oh, Sherrod to Detroit. We had. I didn't like it. I said it in my video that I did that. I didn't like the idea of going him to Detroit. It wasn't the number one spot. I thought Stevie Eiserman would have been... He's an analytics guy. I still don't understand why he took him. Sherratt's very poor defensively. People perceive him to be good for defensively, but he's not. So uh, that was one. We had Dabrinkat going to Ottawa. He went to Ottawa. That was our second pick, though. We weren't sure. That was a trade that we were looking at from Chicago and he went there. And there's many more. Check out my videos. So we're fairly accurate. So today we're going to be looking at John Klingberg. Uh, doesn't look like he's going back to Dallas. John Klingberg asked for a trade actually last year before the season ended at the trade deadline. Apparently offended by the amount of money that Dallas was offering him. Now he's going to go out into the open market and see what he can get. I will say there is a possibility he goes out in the market and realizes that Dallas was fairly accurate in whatever it is their number was, and he ends up kind of squirreling back to Dallas. But if I'm Dallas and a guy did what he did in the middle of the season, I don't think I'm too interested in bringing him back. It might even make it difficult for him when he goes to out there in the free agent market, possibly why he hasn't been signed yet. Anyways, we got five teams we're going to look at. We're going to look at John Klingberg, what he's all, all about, how much he might be asking for, all of those sort of things like that. Usually I have articles that give us uh, some insight as to the things that may happen, but this time that's usually with trades and rumors and stuff like that. The rumor is not really off the wall that, uh, that he's leaving. I don't need to go bring up some articles on that. Uh, he is pretty much really mean. He is a free agent. Now, as far as you're going to ask me, well, how do you know where he's going to go to? Then I'm just using logic here. And when I do my rumors before, I also use logic. There was a rumor that Pasternak might go to somewhere that they may leave. I heard it. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So you're not going to hear it on my video. If I hear a rumor and it has some meat to it that makes logical sense, then I'll do it. This makes logical sense that he moves on. He's already try said that he was going to, that he asked for a trade already. So we're going to look at these teams. As far as where they go, we're going to look at logic. What logically he can fit in cap space and where logically it makes sense. Where is there's room? Where is the need? All right. So let's look at it. First thing we got is this is the Dallas Stars. We're going to look at John Klingberg and what he's all about. He's 29 years old. 
He's from Sweden. This is going to come in handy. Where he's from is going to come in handy as we go down each uh, team and decide where he might go. Uh, he was a fifth-round pick. He's an offensive defenseman. Now, I don't know if you guys are analytics people out there, although I'm an eye test and analytics. It's got to match both. And especially the last year or two, John Klingberg has not been up to par defensively. He's, his offense does make him still have value. His offense does outweigh his defense by a, a small amount, but he's 29 years old. He's not going to be getting better here. If anything, he may be declining. His previous contract was $4.2 million AAV. So, and he just recently had, 40, he has 374 points in 552 games. He's got 59 playoff games under his belt. Uh, went on a good run, remember, in the finals in the bubble there. So he does have a playoff finals experience. He does have experience in the playoffs. Um, he pretty had 47 points in 74 games his last season. I do believe, at least as some of the things I've read, that Klingberg thinks he'd have more offense if he didn't play in Dallas, especially under Rick Bonus. He felt that Rick Bonus played a very defensive type game and it didn't let him be himself. That's the, what I kind of got. And they were obviously offering him a dollar value that was based on his offense. And he said, I would have had more if it wasn't for bonus. That's, that's what it sounded like to me. Uh, that's more or less just educated opinion than any fact there. That's why I'm not putting up anything because I haven't actually heard that. I heard some things when I read and that makes sense. So at 4.2, I'm guessing he's looking at about six million dollars here, six maybe six and a half, and he's probably looking for at least four or five years, something of that nature. Question: Would I give Klingberg that kind of money? Personally, I don't think so. Depending on my situation as a team, there are teams in here where I may do something like that, simply because there's nothing else available, and it does make my team better. And I'm trying to win kind of now-ish, so I would probably do it. And there could be other things too. So we'll look at each team and I'll express if I would or would not do it for a guy like Klingberg. Also, let me know what you think. A lot of people are very high on him. I personally, I just don't like his defense defensive game. And uh, I mean, even if you're a plus-minus guy, which I'm not really, I don't pay much attention to plus-minus. Minus 28 is pretty bad. Even for a bad stat, that usually is somewhat telling, um, especially on a defensive team like Dallas, where you have a player expressing that if this team played more of an offensive game, it would better suit me, yet you're a minus 28, right? But there's lots of people that still have a lot of time for the guy, and we're going to look at each team that I think he may go to. First, Anaheim Ducks. He, and, uh, Klingberg also, by the way, is from, oh, he's from Sweden. Anaheim Ducks, the reason why I took chose the Anaheim Ducks is, is at 29 years old, he, they could use another veteran on this roster. Um, they, they do have some young guys coming up, but I pretty much, I, I'm pretty sure, especially a guy, a smart guy like Verbeek, their new general manager, He's going to want to move them in slowly. Um, not going to want to throw guys right in there. And they don't have guys that are like super ready at the moment. Maybe Drew Hellison. But, I mean, even Drew Hellison has, I don't even think he's got his feet wet in the pros so far, has he? No. He's only been in NCAA. He's an older, he's 21. He's probably going to need some AHL time. And Anaheim has struggled with their power play for a very long time. Now, Jamie Drysdale is probably going to help that down the road, for sure. He's fantastic. Uh, Euro Bekkenainen, he is a puck-moving guy, but he's not really a great power play, play guy. Kevin Shattenkirk came in to help out with the power play, and it did get a little better, but it's still not very good. 
A guy like Klingberg, that's one thing he's one thing he is very good at is the power play. And he's an older veteran. Also, Shattenkirk is going to be a free agent after this year. So he could head his move on move his way out and Klingberg could take that spot. He's a little younger and can be around the team a little longer. Help with a guy like Euro Lekanainen, who I like by the way. I think he's an excellent player, but he was supposed to produce more offense in the NHL. Sometimes he gets a little tentative to go on to the offense. And with his skating stride and everything that he has, uh, the tools he looks like he does have to produce offense, a guy like Klingberg could probably help him out quite a bit. So I don't mind the spot for them. They, uh, they should have cap space, honestly. I do this on the fly, by the way. Completely on the fly. If you're a Ducks fan, sub up. Tell me what you think about this. Of course, um, uh, one take, one time. That's how I do this. So, uh, yeah, I think they have. Oh, a projected cap space, 30 million. Wow. I, I'm surprised they even have that much cap space. So, yeah, they got the cap space to do it. I could definitely see them being in on him, no doubt about that. Now, Klingberg at his age, the reason why I don't have him high on the list, Anaheim has the possibility, he works out in a lot of ways, but he probably at 29 years old is really thinking about a cup. So they would have to convince them that they're going to be ready fairly soon. They can say they picked up guys like Ryan Strom and Frank Fatrano on free agency. You don't do that if you're really just thinking about, you know, seven years down the road so i would say they're looking to speed up this rebuild as much as possible if they can get them to believe it they've got gibson there you know there's a lot of good pieces already there zegris of course is just going to be a beast mason mctavish looks like he's going to be if you can sell them on it i don't think this is a bad spot for them i'm like i said i'm not a klingberg guy i'm not sure i want a guy like Klingberg teaching my young guys when he is so poor defensively, but maybe Anaheim will. Tell me what you guys think out there, uh, Ducks fans. Would you take a John Klingberg on the Ducks? Sub up to my channel and check it out. Okay, Winnipeg Jets. Also, remember, I do this one take on the fly. So if there's any mistakes, so what? Tell me about it. We'll talk about it. I'd rather spend time... I'd rather spend my time talking to you guys about hockey than editing and doing the take over and over and over again. You'd be surprised how long it takes to do this quote, quote, professionally. <laughs> Anyways, okay. The uh, Winnipeg Jets. And I'm saying the Winnipeg Jets simply because when if there's a defenseman available, they should be in on it. Um, I'm not sure that Klingberg would want to go to Winnipeg. That's one of the difficult things that the Winnipeg Jets have. Is Winnipeg isn't the sexiest city in the world to go to, especially after being in a warm place like Dallas. But if he's looking to be play top two, if he thinks he's a top two defenseman, and I get the impression that Klingberg thinks he can, and maybe get a bigger number than he will anywhere else, as long as they can find the cap space to do it. Winnipeg is a, sp is a place that would I think would be happy to, to take him. Dylan DeMello is a pretty decent defensive defenseman, but he should be in your top two. In fact, Pionk is their best defenseman. Joshua Morris, he's very overrated. And... Uh, they could use a power play quarterback. They also struggled with the power play last year, which was it's almost unfathomable with all the talent they have on this team. So bringing in a guy like that would probably help their power play. Um, and he could play. He could help a young guy like Dylan Sandberg, who is not really known for his offense. But you never know. You could get more offense out of him if he got to play with a guy like uh, Klingberg. So... Winnipeg was there. I, I would say they would probably have to move on from DeMello to make this move. Mostly because cap space issues. Oh, current 15 million. So, you know what? Wow. 
They have Appleton. They got assigned to Bois. They could probably fit him in here. Overpay a little bit, and you move on from DeMello because you're not going to really need him. He could, becomes redundant. What do you think, Winnipeg fans? Offensive guy, 50, 60 point guy. Thing is, he's not great defensively. And you say, well, you play him with Dylan. Dylan's also overrated. The whole individual players on Winnipeg are overrated. So, I personally, I don't, I don't think I do this if I'm Winnipeg. I think I just hold out for better two-way players. Like if I'm a general manager of the Winnipeg Jets, I'm looking for defensively strong players, and then offense comes afterwards. As many as you possibly can. And I mean analytically good defense. Brendan Dillon is about a, is average to below average defensively. Um, a lot of people love him because he's big and he hits people and he thinks they're good. Def he's good defensively. No. He blocks block shots is another one. Oh, he blocks a lot of shots. That doesn't mean he's good defensively. He, he may not have to block those shots if he didn't put himself out of position in the first place. So, which Brendan Dillon has a tendency to do. Guys like Ben Chirot do that all the time. They look like heroes when they block a shot, but actually they never would have had to block it if they would have played their position better in the D zone. So, anyways, Logan Stanley is a great example of that. But I think that it's possible that Klingberg could be available to Winnipeg if he wants to go to Winnipeg and if they're willing to pay the price. I think for Winnipeg, they'll probably have to pay a little more. You're looking at $6.5 million, something like that, for four years for it to get him there. With Winnipeg, they might be able to do this simply because anybody who wants to go to Winnipeg, they pretty much got to be happy with. He's NHL level. He wants to come to Winnipeg. Let's sign him up. All right. Next. Calgary Flames, and my, uh, first of all, my condolences to all of you Calgary Flames fans. To have Goudreau leave the way he did, and he was going to go to Philly, and he wanted to go home, and all of those sort of things like that, and then he ends up signing in Columbus. Ah, I, I, it's still closer in Columbus. It's a short flight rather than a long flight from Calgary. Uh, a lot more expensive of a flight from Calgary, but, you know, they were going to pay him well over a million dollars more per year. I guess he could afford that flight. So I don't know why he did what he did, but man, it's left you with some cap space and some issues on defense. Uh, Yusuf Balamaki did already ask for a trade. As of right now, he's going to be playing in the Calgary lineup next year. He did not play well last year. Sutter was not happy with him at all. And he ended up playing in the minors. They went and signed Gil Nicholas Malosh. Now, Sutter is brilliant. I mean, he got Drew Branson playing decent defense last year. So he might be able to get Nicholas Malosh. Who knows what he could turn into with Sutter then. And you could say the same for Klingberg. Because not only is Sutter really good at getting defensemen who are big and strong and perceived to be good defensively but aren't to do well, like Zadaroff and Good Branson. But he's really good at, at, at uh, getting offensive defensemen to be able to be responsible defensively as well. And if you're going to be shy on scoring now a little bit with Goudreau being gone, you might as well get have a good power play and have a strong defense. So if you put Klingberg here, say with, uh, he's a right defenseman, with Hannafin, and you can bring Anderson down here with Shilington, and then, of course, Zadaroff. Actually, you could even play Klingberg with Zadaroff. And if you can get Malosh playing like what, like uh, as well as Pete Branson was last year with Shilington, you got a pretty solid defensive pair defensive there. And you got a pretty decent uh, power play as well, which was erratic, I believe, last year. Correct me if I was wrong, Calgary Flames fans. So you use a little bit, about $6 million a year, to get uh, Klingberg. You use a little bit of that money, and you can still add a forward to your offensive group, and you got a deep, fairly deep team in Calgary. What do you think, Calgary fans? Sub yourself up. I do this one take, no editing stuff all the time. 
just off the top of my head. And uh, what do you think? Of, I, I think he would work out well there. I think he would be pretty. Like the more I do this, the more I do this, the more I think that this would be a pretty good play for the Calgary Flames. Sub yourself up to my channel on YouTube. Tell me what you think in the comment section. We'll go ladder. Call me crazy, whatever you want to do. All right, next. The Vancouver Canucks. And I know you're all screaming, we have no cap space. What are you talking about, Derek Perlow? We have no cap space. Okay, hear me out. There's a couple teams that I believe could be able, willing to take Tyler Myers' contract until 2024 at $6 million a year. Tyler Myers did have a better year than he has had before last year. Uh, before last year, he, it was a better year for him, but he's still not very good. He's way overrated. In fact, even now it's starting to catch up to people that he's not very good. Even the people that thought he was good before are starting to realize he's not. So, but... I think there's a there's still a perceived value for a six foot eight, two hundred twenty nine pound defenseman who did have a decent year last year for him. He did improve. One of the teams that he could go to, that you could move to get Klingberg, is the very team that's not signing Klingberg, and that is the Dallas Stars. And the reason why I say the Dallas Stars is because they love big. Players, big, 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 big. That's what they want. Big, big, big. Six two. Robertson just brought in Mason Marchman at six four. Roddick Fox is a big boy. Uh, you know, Yanni Hockenpah, Issa Lindell, big, 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 big. I think that they, I, I think that they would be happy to get. Maybe they could be. They don't seem like a big analytics driven team. They could be happy to get Myers over there to play on the right defense with Thomas Harley or put Hawk and Paw down and have him play with Lindell. Lindell is a stud defenseman on defense. So Myers could kind of maybe get his offense going a little more there. Um, and you got like this towering defense that they seem to like. So I don't, I don't think you get anything back in this deal. You don't want to get anything back in this deal because you want the cap space to give it to Klingberg. So why Klingberg, you ask? Well, he's Swedish, of course. They love their Swedes. They love their Swedes. He can play with Ekman, Oliver. Oliver Ekman. Yeah, Larson, which I, I wouldn't doubt that he'd be happy to play with that with him. You got this, of course, the Sedins that are part of the mix here. You got Elias Pedersen there. Um, they are drafting a lot of Swedes. The whole Swedish concept, their management is Swedish. Now, why would you want to do something like this? Swedish people are family oriented people, and uh, they treat each other like family when they're in that. And they don't like not include people, they're not racist or anything like that. They bring that environment into your team. That's why the Detroit Red Wings really love Swedish people. And having a family atmosphere on a team is huge when you're talking about signing contracts and stuff. If people love it where they are, money isn't that big of a deal. Nils Hoglander is another one. There you go. And Klingberg is a little younger than Tyler Myers. They are trying to get younger. I could see it. Give him six million. Give him basically the same deal as Myers. See if he'll take it. Maybe he'll be happy because all the Swedes are here, and he can play with Ekman Larson or Quinn Hughes or something like that. Now, I think most of you out there would be like, "Well, we're so we need some beef on our defense. This isn't really helping." Well, you just they got to restructure the whole defense anyways. They're, they're, Dermot, I don't even think they'll bring him back. Kyle Burrows. He's not that great. Like, there needs to be a whole restructuring to this defense. Anyways, so if you can get a guy like that now, try him out. Hopefully he doesn't ask for a no, for a no trade clause. And if somebody takes his roster spot, great. But until then, he might be the only option out there right now. So what do you think, Vancouver fans? 
John Klingberg to Vancouver and Myers out of there. Also, another team that was in on Klingberg was Seattle. You could possibly, you know, Seattle was a possibility. And another team that could be in for Myers if they don't get Klingberg is my number one spot, the Ottawa Senators. So if Vancouver were to swoop in and grab Klingberg, then Ottawa might be more inclined to trade for Myers. But my number one spot for Klingberg is the Ottawa Senators. And there's several reasons for this. Uh, they have said publicly that they're looking for a top six. They've obviously done some um, great things to improve their lineup, like trading for Alex Dabrinkat, who was our number two spot for Alex Dabrinkat in the video we did. If you remember, if you like, if you were watching, uh, why wouldn't you be watching? I don't know. Everybody in the land is. But they went out and got Claude Giroux. They were talking about now getting a top six defenseman. And comes Klingberg. They now cap space wise, they have eleven million dollars. But it looks like they're not worried about cap space too much here. Like, usually they're not a team that goes right to the cap. But this is a team that is acting a heck of a lot like it wants to go for it right away. No more rebuild. We grabbed Giroux. We grabbed a Brinkat. These aren't moves that you're doing so you can win five years from now. They're looking to win fairly soon. Now, what's the benefit of grabbing? A right-handed Swedish defenseman that is maybe you know not the greatest defensively in Klingberg well one thing is he can maybe help Eric Brandstrom build along who I still think is going to be a very good defenseman by the way uh, that would also probably be a perk uh, he can help out Eric Brandstrom he can play with Thomas Shabbat that would be a that would be a solid offensive tandem, my gosh. This team does seem to play a very odd offensive brand of hockey, too. So, Thomas Shabbat's going to probably do most of the heavy lifting defensively on that line. And he's underrated defensively. He's very good. But those two guys offensively would be fantastic. Then you can bring Ham Hamannick down and play with Branston. you got lots of options here. And they need a top six. They're asking for a top six. They're saying they want a top six. They have the cap space to do it. The only way thing that, you know, it's possible he doesn't want to go to Ottawa forever for whatever reason. I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe he doesn't like winters or something like that. He's from Sweden. Why would that matter? I don't know. But as long as he wants to go to Ottawa, the other problem would be that Ottawa has not been good for the last little while, but this team looks like they're going to knock it out of the park here right away. And I'm pretty sure his agent is telling him, like, this is a really good opportunity. You get in right on the, as the team is going into dynasty land, or at least contender land for quite some time. Probably get top six minutes. You don't have to worry about that. And the only thing that would prevent him from wanting to do something like this would be that Sanderson, where the heck is Sanderson? Where is he? Jake Sanderson is coming up in the lineup, but Jake Sanderson's a lefty. So he knocks Brandstrom down. He gets to play with Jake Sanderson. There's Docker. There's a few other guys. And if they can fight that spot from him, then good. You know, Lars, uh, no, uh, Lassie Thompson is another guy that's going to be trying to take that spot for him. But you got to have that kind of competition. And if they wrestle that spot for him from him, then they wrestle the spot for him. But if they don't, they got him. I think it's a perfect spot. Ottawa's my spot. My uh, Ottawa, what do you think? Ottawa fans, do you like him? Do you like Klingberg in Ottawa? How much would you pay him? Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Uh, I personally would be all over it. 
I don't know if you would be, but I would be all over it. That's one of the few times I would be. He's not my favorite guy in the world, but he just works perfect now for Ottawa, I think. That's my full 42. Give me a comment in the comment section. Hit the like button. Sub yourself up so we can be more part. I'm going to be doing this all summer long because there's going to be a whole lot of stuff going on this summer. We want to be part of it. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.